Hi, my name is Saul Savetto. I'm a data scientist at Valsera. And today I'm going to talk to you about some CWL tools we've implemented on our platform to facilitate drug discovery. Now, I want to start by uh, bringing up some context as to why we need tools to help aid in the drug discovery process. So for those of you who are not familiar with the drug discovery pipeline, it is a very consuming, time consuming and expensive process. So there are several stages during this process. Um, so if you turn your attention to um, the figure here on the left, you have a pre-discovery phase where you do much of the research and development to find potential drug candidates. And then you move on to pre the preclinical stage where you test these drugs on animal models. And then that is followed by the clinical trial stage where you test these drugs in humans for their safety and efficacy. And at the end of the stage, you might have a potential drug that you can then along with the appropriate paperwork, submit to the FDA for approval. Now, it's not a surefire thing that um, your drug will be approved. The FDA receives thousands of submissions every year, and only a handful of these submissions get approved. So there's, because of this, there's a lot of interest in trying to reduce the cost and time um, during the process of developing these drugs. So um, drug development companies and research researchers have become interested in, um, in silico modeling techniques to try to minimize the amount of time and resources they put into this process. Now, traditionally you have um, scientists in the lab who identify potential drug candidates and test them for their safety and efficacy. Um, within silico modeling, you use computational techniques to identify potential drug candidates. And there's two ways you can do this. One, you can, if you know the molecule or molecules that bind to your target of interest, you can use computational algorithms to find molecules that are chemically similar to the known binding molecules. Another way you could do this is um, you could simulate the binding process of several molecules to the molecular target. And in doing so, you can find uh, molecules that have a high affinity for the target. So these could be potentially therapeutic agents. Now, there are several initiatives out there to try to optimize this process. One of which I want to tell you about is the Predicative Oncology Model and Data Clearinghouse, or MODAC, as, we'll, as it will be referred to for the rest of this talk. Now, MODAC's goal is to provide a data repository of data sets and machine learning models and make them available to the broader research community, as well as make them publicly available. And there's several initiatives. Um, or several collaborations that MODAC has um, to aid in this goal. Two of which, um, two of which are the joint design of advanced computing solutions for cancer program and the accelerating therapeutics for opportunities in medicine consortium. Now, for the joint design of advanced computing solutions for cancer, their goal is to provide computational tools to accelerate cancer research. And with their MODA collaboration, they've developed tools to do predictive modeling at the cellular, molecular, and population level. For the Adam Consortium, there are several industry partners within the consortium, as, as well as the NCI, and it is led by Lidos. And their main aim is to create a drug development platform to optimize the process. And this is all to decrease the time to identify new and novel treatments. Okay, 
So if you're interested in going onto the MODAC website, um, this, is what, this is the type of interface you're gonna be greeted with. You can search for a particular topic of interest and filter your results by program name, study name, or asset name. And then on the right, you'll see your search results where you'll see a brief description of the particular model, of the particular data set that you might be interested in. Now, one tool that has become of interest that has come out of the collaboration between MODAC and Atom is the Atom Modeling Pipeline. So the Atom Modeling Pipeline is, um, is really built on two principles. So one is that we, they want to enable best practices in chemical activity and property prediction. Another one is that um, the integration of machine learning and drug discovery best practices is also important. And in the spirit of this, the modeling pipeline contains several different types of functionality. One is that we want to automate deep learning training. So um, to do this, we, we perform extensive hyperparameter search. So we want to try to traverse the hyperparameter space to find an optimal set of parameters that maximizes or minimizes the, um, your metric or your performance metric of interest. Um, and because you want to train uh, a slew of models, we want to perform extensive benchmarking on these models as well. Um, the atom modeling pipeline also provides access to a large collection of pharmaceutically relevant uh, data sets as well. And this is the most important part uh, is that it's open source and available to the broader research community. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm just going to go briefly about um, the different functionalities with the Atom Pipeline. I think we, we talked about this, but kind of want to give a little a, more context into this process. So we, of course, have functionality for data ingestion and curation, featureization, model training and tuning, prediction generation, and visualization and analysis. But where, where this all comes together, is that the atom modeling pipeline provides functionality to extract data, large data sets from several different sources, then train a slew of models on these different data sets, and not only save these models, but allow um, a way for someone to come and access these models later down the line. And then when you train these models, you save the results onto some sort of database where you can refer to these performance metrics um, for later use, maybe to make informed decisions in your drug discovery pipeline. Okay, so because the Atom Atom modeling pipeline is is really a neat tool, we we chose to implement it on our Cancer Genomics Cloud platform or the CGC. So I'm going to walk through how we did that. So if you're not familiar with the Cancer Genomics Cloud, it was a collaboration between Belsera and NCI. And the goal here is to provide access to large petabyte scale data sets to the broader cancer research community. And one of the neat things about our platform is that we provide several different tools to perform analysis on these large data sets. So we have a public apps gallery where you can go on and we provide about 800 different tools, some of which have been developed by Belsera, others have been developed by individual uh, users. And the backbone of all these tools is really the common workflow language to enable reproducibility and portability across systems. All right. So um, I talked about a little bit about the functionality of the Atom Pipeline. So the way we implemented um, the functionality in our platform is that we have four different modules. We have a data curation module. We have a model pipeline module. 
hyperparameter optimization module and a model prediction module. So each of these is its own unique workflow. So I'm not going to go walk through every single one of them, but I'm going to start, uh, I'm just going to focus on the model pipeline for the rest of this talk. So to start, here's kind of a um, snippet of the CWL code on the right. Um, so this is just kind of a brief description here. And then um, if you actually wanted to access the, these tools on our platform, what you would do is you would go up on the top and uh, click pub the public projects tab. And then on the ample card on the lower right here, you would uh, click copy project and it will fork your project to your account. So um, when you do this, you'll be greeted with a brief description on the left here of the different tools that we've provided. And you also be greeted with some example workflow runs that our team has developed. So I'm going to take the model pipeline um, workflow as an example. So let's give you a scenario to kind of give you some context. So let's say you're interested in the KCNH2 gene, which is a gene that codes for uh, potassium channels. And you do and you did your due diligence, looked at the literature, and found that these potassium channels are associated in uh, several heart conditions. And you know, your, in your interest is in trying to find a drug to try to treat these heart conditions. So you would want to develop a machine learning model that identifies uh, molecules that have a high affinity for the target potassium channel channels. So Let's let's assume that you did the data curation module, and um, you received an output. So the output of each of these modules serves as input into the next module. As an example, after you take the output from the data curation module, you can use that as input for the model pipeline module or workflow. You can then adjust the settings to your liking, so choosing the appropriate um, machine learning model. Uh, what type of prediction type, whether it be regression or classic classification, and the term featureizer you want to use. And then you run the workflow, and when you go back to the screen, you'll be greeted under the output settings header with a list of uh, output files. I'm not going to walk through each of these files, but to give you an example, here on the right, you'll see a plot that shows the correlation between predicted values, that, so values that the model has predicted, and the observed value. So you can see that this has a high correlation here. And so um, this might be a, a really good performing model that you might want to investigate further. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I just wanna take a moment to acknowledge our fantastic team here, our fantastic team here at Nocera. Um, they've done great work to try to push, uh, push, the, push and develop this project along. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this talk and I'll take any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.